Welcome to Visions of Victory, our weekly broadcast of Bethlehem Baptist Church in Springhouse, Pennsylvania. Thank you for joining us where we remember the words of the Psalmist David. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. So sit back and relax because the next voice you'll hear is that of our pastor, Charles W. Kwan. Let the church say amen. amen. I would ask this morning that you would allow God to give you a creative, receptive spirit to the word of God. That even though we perhaps have heard these words before, that God would allow you to have a fresh look at them. And so I want to ask you this one to join me as we turn our attention to the book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter, the seventh and eighth verse. And again, with spiritual eyes to see it in a different way. The New Living Translation reads in this manner. However, he has given each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. That is why the scriptures say, when he ascended to the heights, he led a crowd of captives and gave gifts to his people. I want to share with you this morning from the subject, different ministries, different ministries. And I want you to listen to the words that the author pens in the president's devotional. They really have made me think today. Let's remember the folks who keep this world from overflowing with disorder. The trash collectors who do their work out of view. Let's pray for those who make our hallways sparkle, keep our workplace well supplied. The janitors who move with quiet discipline, the drivers and officers, cooks and groundkeepers. We're supported in a thousand different ways each day by professionals who work with dignity and excellence. As Paul's letter to the Corinthians tells us, their works come from the same spirit and the same Lord, so we honor them. As I read these words, my heart really was touched because I believe that we have people in our society as well as in the church who are overlooked. I am grateful to God for the people who clean this church. We're quick to criticize, but very seldom do we hear praises. It takes a special person and a special gift to clean up behind some folk. So we thank Evangelist Eric Dutton. Remember Wally Benson. Remember right now Quincy who is working, trying to make sure that the house of God is clean. Whenever I see the need to do something to help, I do it because it doesn't matter what title you have. God has called us to work together for good and not to develop hierarchy, especially in the church. I feel like preaching this morning. And, 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 and sometimes we allow positions to determine one's status. And I've said before, in my mind, there's no difference between a deacon and a trustee or a deaconess. 
Now, I know that there are those who feel like the deacons are the higher order, but to be able to count God's money, you need the same qualifications of a deacon being loyal and faithful, honest. And the same is true in terms of deaconess. Now let me also say that as we look at what's taking place in the world, let us not get to the point that we judge every police officer in a negative manner. They're good police officers like they're good politicians and good doctors and good lawyers and they're also some bad doctors and lawyers and bad preachers. So we cannot generalize even across racial lines because when the truth is told, people of all walks of life do dishonorable things. And if someone broke into my home, I'm calling a police officer. It's quiet in here this morning. I need the fire department. I need somebody to pick up the trash. And we should not look at them as any less than anybody else. I went to the hospital uh, to see Leroy Meekins. And again, another kind of narrow view we have is even the people who work in the cafeteria. Because his daughter was there, and they had a menu and they had to select what was appropriate for him to eat. Mm -hmm. Giving him the wrong food would cause additional discomfort. Yeah, yeah. So even the persons in the cafeteria were important. Some of you folks, don't, don't lose me. I'm going somewhere. The person who changes the bed. The driver who takes somebody to the hospital. And in the church, the same is true. We all need one another. The ushers, the choir, the people in the kitchen, the parking ministry, the Sunday school. And what would happen if we were all doing the same thing? Nothing would get done. We even need the folk who are loud like me to say amen. And we need some other folk who are quiet who can just help us get out of that amen situation. <laughs> and we've also created in the church this kind of disconnect between praises and nonverbal praises. We have to talk about unity in the body of Christ. In the text, Paul is writing to the Ephesians about unity and Christian growth. He refers to the gifts that God has given to bring about the unity and growth. No gift is given individually for your own purpose. Every gift is for the body of Christ. Paul, the humble servant of the Lord, is in prison, but his love for God is still strong. He wants the body of Christ to grow and develop and take their rightful place in the family of God. So he says, the gifts that he gave was some would be apostles, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. Oh, my brothers and sisters. Paul had to deal with many problems. There were cliques, schisms. In the church. Yes. Come on, 
That's why I've been moved, listen to me, to move to a multicultural church. Because the black church came out of the fact we could not worship anyplace else. But if we're going to grow, it's going to take all of us together, Latinos, Hispanics. You quiet on me this morning. Not only did Paul deal with the gift issue, but he had to deal with those who wanted instant growth, microwave religion. Quick. It takes a long time to grow. There are no instant Christians. It's a progressive period that you need to be able to go through so that God will get you to where he wants you to be. Trials and troubles and disappointments and heartaches and setbacks and obstacles. Do you hear me this morning? Where's your growth in the body of Christ? And that's why, my brothers and sisters, what we have sought to do is in 2015, the power of one. Each one win one. And you can't win a person if you're not one yourself. Paul was against preachers and teachers who claimed they had supernatural powers. I tried to say this over and over again, that all of us are the same. There's nothing supernatural about me. In fact, God does not use supernatural people. Paul himself said, I'm a sinner, the most worst sinner of all. So God does not use perfect people but he uses people who are accessible. We hurt like you hurt. We cry like you cry. We get... I, we, I can't even get it out. We get angry like, like you do. That's why we need your prayers. Because we're human. The only one who was divine and human was our master. None of us are so divine that we're not beyond falling apart. Master Campbell talked about the pressure of a preacher's kid, the pressure of a preacher's wife or the preacher's husband for that case. We look at them like they're supposed to be above that. Isn't it odd that we don't look at our attorney's spouse? We don't even look at our physician's spouse. We don't even know if they have a spouse. Oh, you folks are quiet. I'm not speaking in tongue yet. But we've got this silly notion that this family is supposed to be above humankind. As believers, we grow in Christ. We're not babes still drinking milk. We got too many milk drinking believers in the body of Christ. Can't take anything. Always criticizing everything. Always shooting down something. That's a babe in Christ. My God. We need men and women who value being a part of the family of God. Believers who are blessed. You know, I, I'm, I'm, we don't hear it too much anymore. I'm so glad. Too blessed to be stressed. I'm so glad that is getting kind of weak. Because we do find ourselves getting stressed. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Believers do get stressed. And if you've never been stressed, maybe you're not doing anything. Amen. 
you're trying to work and take care of family, that can be stressful. Just drive in your car. <laughs> Lord Jesus, particularly if you're driving behind a driver like me. <laughs> Am I serious about that? Yes. You can get stressed. Yes. God wants to believe us be of the same mind. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. We ought to be on the same accord, wanting the same thing. Wanting to praise God. Wanting to honor God. Wanting to serve God. There ought to be our desire to want to please God. And when one hurts, we all hurt. When one is joyful, we're all joyful. That's why there should not be any haters in the church. Turn to somebody and say, I hope you're not a hater. Should not be any haters in the church. And I know that there's a whole lot of haters. I mentioned this morning that on Tuesday night at our church conference, Reverend Keith Hodges will be the pastor's special assistant. And all of the ministers will have an assignment. Everybody can't take the same position. There are people who have different gifts. His gift, quite honestly, is different than mine. He leads the worship in ways that sometimes my wife said, I wish he was leading and you would sit down. <laughs> he has a gift. That's his gift. And he does it with artisticity. He doesn't fake it. You can tell when people are faking. That's why you should not try to copy somebody else. Be original, whatever you do. Don't try to be somebody else. Whatever you do, be original. I mentioned once before, they got this class for preachers. I hope you don't go. Don't you go either. Don't you go. Where you learn how to hoop. If that's not what God's called, you don't need a class to hoop. You ought to come off and sincere. Well, they got another class to teach you how to praise, you know. I mean, they have all kinds of classes. You know, one class, praise class number one. You elevators number two class. Whatever you do, let it be sincere. Don't be a copycat. Don't be a clone. Be who God's called you to be. And don't be jealous about anybody else. Whatever you do, let God get the glory out of your life. We have one chairman of the deacon's ministry. Not two, not three, one. I read a book once, and it was really good, How to Be Second. A whole lot of folks need to read that book. In fact, there's another book, How to Be Third. Because <laughs> everybody can't be first. Too much is given, much is required. <laughs> it doesn't look, it looks kind of good, but... You don't want it. Be grateful where God has placed you and placed you. Oh, God. Nothing's worse than somebody else trying to be somebody else. I, I have some characteristics of of my pastor, but I can't be Pastor Campbell. In fact, I want to make it a little clearer. My sons have some characteristics of me, but they're different. They're different. They might walk like me a little bit, but their minds are different. And guess what? Some of the things I did as their father, they have decided to do another way. That is growth. That's process. And some of the things, no matter how much you love your parents, some things you're doing differently because you live in a different time. The whole point of this message is that we need one another and that God has given us the gifts so that the body of Christ will grow. I feel sorry for persons who have aligned themselves to watch TV evangelists, is that the only way they can grow? 
And I thank God for TV ministry and for radio and for satellite radio and everything else, but nothing takes the place of being in the family of God with the people of God. Do I have a witness? Do I have a witness? Do you realize in Bethlehem, even though we have a number of ministers that Deacon Ron Bradley, a deacon, teaches Bible study. Aaron teaches the noonday Bible study. It had nothing to do with title. It's their gift. You can't appropriate people based only on title. It's gifts. And that's why, you know, we're going out today to visit the sick. It's a gift to be able to go and visit somebody else in the hospital. It takes a special person to do that. The worst thing you can do is be in the hospital and somebody come in looking mean, bad, and sad. And start telling you about, you sick, and they start telling you about what's going on in their life. Like, what in the world? Is, are you on your bed of affliction? Child, I'm going through. I can't pay my bill. What? Would you come back next week? You want to be an encourager. That's why also, you know the most important person in this church? Not the deacons. Not the trustees. Not even the pastor or preacher. Not the choir. Do you know who it is? Is that usher on that door? Because when they come in and you see a mean looking usher, <laughs> bye. That will discourage folk from coming back. In fact, coming in. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. It takes a special person. And you'd be surprised if some of the folks tell me, Pastor, that usher sure was mean to me. I won the glass of water. You can't move now. Sit still. Don't move. Oh my God, there's a way to talk to people. I'm meddling now, but that's all right. I mean, we need hospitality, it's so essential. So we pray today that God will use us even as we move into 2015. Let me say this. Every member of this church ought to be engaged in some ministry. And there are ministries that do not meet every week, every month, but every individual, your growth ought to cause you to be involved in something. Whether it's on a short-term committee, during the course of the year, you've been doing something to build up the body of Christ. Something. So I challenge you today, before this year concludes, find something to do that will help the body of Christ that God will get the glory. Yeah. We need more Sunday school teachers. We need more men. We need more folk in marriage ministry, in single ministry, in aging ministry, in grief ministry. And what we don't have, you ought to have a heart to make it happen. It takes a special person to pass out a track. I know I'm right. I asked folk, and, and you can see a whole lot up here. I said, turn to somebody and say, can I walk with you? <laughs> Their phone's on mute. <laughs> I mean, you see, folk can't, you open, in the body, you can't open your mouth in here. And you might be sitting next to somebody who just needs a gentle reminder. Do you understand what I'm saying? You might need, somebody might need just a warm embrace, just a little push. And you sit here and you can't even say, can I walk with you? That's the least you can. And if you can't do that here, 
Lord Jesus, where, where can you do it? You can't. This is a safe, this is a safe place. We're family. And how many times have people left because nobody said to them, can I walk with you? And guess what? In sales, they won't let you walk out until they quit. You leave it. Let me let me bring this price down. Hold it. Come back here. Come 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 back here. How can we make this happen for you? We got a sale next week, but because you're here today, I'm gonna give you a discount today. I mean, you heard that before. And the person don't even know. You said you look like you come from a nice family. What's your name? They start getting all personal. And you start telling them stuff. In the body of Christ, you can't even talk to the person next to you. And lastly, do you know the most sincere problem we have in the church? It's not organization. It's not administration. It is people problems. Folk can't get along with one another. She didn't speak to me. I wasn't elected president. They took my song. They took my seat. They burnt my potato salad. And you don't even put potato salad in the oven. They burned it. And folk remember stuff from 40 years. It sounds funny. But most of the problems in the church come from personalities. Yeah. And do you know what, my brothers and sisters? You ask folk why they don't go to church. Doesn't mean they don't love the Lord. They didn't like the pastor. Well, I feel like preaching now. They don't like him. Their own spiritual growth is zero. And they let somebody else or something else may not be the pastor, the deacons, or the deaconess, and somebody else, they don't like it. No one should stop your relationship with God. No one. And your growth is determined how you can reconcile with another individual who may have hurt you. I'm finished. Do you have it? We hope you've been inspired you and encouraged by today's message. You're you invited to visit us at Bethlehem church. Baptist, a warm no multicultural church with church. two Sunday services, 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. We're located in Springhouse, Pennsylvania at Penland Pike and Dager Road, only 15 minutes from Philadelphia. We hope to see you soon. God bless you, and remember, love God, serve people. And we look back at the history of our church, 